So this is a surreal moment for me, Mercy, particularly an African in Nigeria speaking to one of the powerful women in my own, in my own mind and someone, because it's not very common that you see women as managing directors of an organization. So when they were talking about patrons for Agile 20 Reflect, I was like, I need to interview her. <laughs> Because I remember when she accepted my connection, I started dancing like, yeah, <laughs> that was so much fun. So I have with me Ellen Grau, and I'd like you to tell us a little bit about yourself in your own words. I can't introduce you more than you can introduce yourself. Um, thank you so much, Mercy. I am thrilled to be here talking to you, by the way. Um, so I am an agile coach and trainer and facilitator and kind of a jack of all trades. Um, I am, as you, as you said in your introduction, my current gig is that I am the managing director of Agile Alliance, which is one of the unexpected twists of 2020. This has been a year that has been um, full of unexpected changes. And that, that's one of the changes that happened in my life. But I have been part of the Agile community for I well over 10 years now, I got my start back when I worked at a large telecommunications company. And uh, I am thrilled to be in this role where I am helping bring the global, global agile community together. Because that's, that's what really gets me excited is being able to learn from agile, other agilists, being able to share experiences, being able to get together and have some fun together too and de-stress a little bit because being change agents, it's difficult work. And uh, being able to get together with people who know what you're going through and share your learnings is a really powerful thing. Thank you so much. Um, one of the things that really resonated, I mean, that you have actually repeated now is that the funness of the Agile experience, and which is one thing that we have brought to life with Agile 20 Reflect, reflecting on the 20 years of Agile Manifesto. Um, retrospectively, how would you evaluate the Manifesto 20 years? And what have we done so well? What can we improve on and what changes can we make? I mean, just looking 20 years today and maybe tomorrow. Wow. So, you know, I think the Agile Manifesto was a really, it was a great start to a conversation, but it honestly, it wasn't even the start to a conversation. There were a whole bunch of different conversations and ideas and ways of doing things that came together that culminated in that particular document. But as it captured our values, as it captured what we think is important about how we come together as work, to work as people, it made a really powerful statement and created a whole new network of conversations. You know, where I think fun comes into it, by the way, is in that very first line. It's about individuals and interactions over processes and tools, right? One of the intents of the authors of the manifesto, I believe, I haven't checked with them personally about this, but was to really bring the idea of humanity back into how do we develop software? How do we solve complex problems together? How do we relate to each other as human beings in order to get that done well? And in my mind, being playful is one of those integral parts of being human with each other so that we can do great work. So that's where I take some of the inspiration from the practice that I have as, as an Agile coach is about even when we're trying to get very important, very serious things done, how do we, uh, how do, we do it in a way that is playful, that allows us to engage our emotions, because that in, can often help us have better solutions to, to the work that we're doing. But uh, to, to your question, the other part of your question that I just want to address a little bit is for me, the really important thing about the Agile Manifesto is something that early in my days as an Agilist, I actually kind of skipped right by, is that very opening line in the preamble about we are uncovering better oh, ways. Yes. 
I think sometimes we lose sight of that, right? We get caught yeah. up in the, how will we, we get, we actually get kind of caught up a little too much in the processes and the frameworks and the, how shall we do it? And the, what will we call this thing? And we forget about the fact that what's really at the heart of agility is uncovering better ways of doing things all the time. So it's not static. There is no one true way of being agile. There's no one permanent way of being agile because kind of by definition, working in an agile way implies that constantly you're, you know, you're figuring out what will I try next? You're looking at the results and then you're going, what did I learn from this experience? What am I going to do differently based on what I've learned? So it's constantly evolving. It's constantly changing. The values stay constant. The principles still, still lasted pretty well, but, but it's, it's, it's a, agility is a moving target. It's, it's not a this is how we do things. It's a, this is how we figure out what to do differently next. Absolutely. I had a, an interview with um, a group of agilists across Africa, one from Gambia, uh, Zambia and another from Kenya. And they're all ambassador for Agile 20 Reflect. It would um, excite you to note that Agile has evolved beyond software development. I know in Nigeria, we apply it to wedding planning, to the event industry. People have adopted it for their family activities. So the agile mindset, just knowing that it's okay to fail and to fail fast, just adopting, just keep on covering better ways. In, I mean, in the right ways of using. One of the things that you mentioned earlier was um, you would like to speak with regards to the excitement and the grassroots nature of the agile reflect 20, um, Agile Reflect uh, Festival that is holding February 2020. What 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 connects with you more and why? Oh, one of, one of the things I love about how this is coming together because when when Scott first reached out to me about this is the idea that it wasn't going to be a formal structured event, that it was going to be truly self-organizing, people who are passionate around a topic coming together and figuring out how do we celebrate this? What's the right way to do this in my community from my point of view? Um, you know, how, how do we bring people together in order to ask ourselves collectively as a community, hey, what has the past 20 years been like? What have we learned? Where are we today and what are we going? And doing that in a really self-organizing and a very distributed way. Um, one of, as I said, one of the things that makes me passionate is making those connections around the globe, right? And figuring out how do we share our learnings? Because just by the nature of the universe, you know, we tend to hang out in a particular part of the agile community. I go to these particular conferences or I work in this particular area. I know this set of people. And certainly we have lots of opportunities to exchange views through, you know, social media and sharing publications and blogs and videos and things like that. Um, but finding ways that we can bring different groups of people together under one banner to, to celebrate agility together. That really appealed to me and doing it in the grassroots, low key, non-commercial, everybody is welcome at the table. We wanna hear from everybody. You know, we, we wanna put some guardrails in place to make sure that people are, are, I'll just say bringing their best selves, right? To participate, but inviting everybody in. It's about setting aside, well, I have this opinion or I work in this particular part of the field. It's about bringing everybody together to have these conversations and, and hopefully having some fun along the way too. Because as I said, I think that's really critical to the human experience. We're taught, especially this year, especially this year, when there have just been so many things going on and everything is so serious, bringing a little bit of lightness and joy and playfulness to thinking, how do we get together and, and, and reflect on where we've been and where we're going is really critical. Yeah, and indeed, if you see, I mean, on this side, where yeah. am I pointing to that side? <laughs> Bringing people together. I think Scott Swivert has done that. Agile, I would say, saved my life. And just being part of the festival has given me a sense of purpose, uh, a sense to, to leave again and to add value. And 
one thing is sure that this Agile 20 Reflect Festival has brought people, I've met people from South America, from North America, from one of, uh, one of ambassador Nepal in Nepal, she'll be speaking at my event is only possible because of the communal nature of the festival. And I think mm -hmm. that speaks very, speaks to the very core of what Agile is. And I remember when I applied, it was Kemi Raji that said to me, oh, Mercy, I think you should apply for this. You have a lot of energy. Go and add some value. <laughs> and I applied. And I remember my first meeting was, I don't know what I was getting into, but I was very excited. And I've been driven ever since. Can I ask now, in your own word, what does Agile mean to you, Ellen Girl? So for me, and it's interesting because... But sorry, before I answer your question, I just want to speak to something you said, because I think this is really important, because you talked about the personal journey of, of, of as you have become immersed in the Agile community, as you've sort of really thought yes. about what it means to work in an Agile way. And I think that's a really common experience. And I think that's one of the things that makes the Agile community a little bit different than other professional communities that have come together, is because as as, as practitioners, as we have started to engage with the agile values and the agile principles and agile ways of working, this isn't just about how do we build software differently or how do we solve different kinds of problems differently? It becomes, how do I think differently about how I react to the world, right? How do I think about being more adaptive, about questioning assumptions, about looking and observing and collecting data and making decisions about, uh, you know, what to do differently when it comes next. I, I think we, you know, how, how do I get more comfortable with uncertainty? And I think that for me personally, that's been a big part of what has been my, my personal agile journey. It's not just when I started this off, I was in software testing. And certainly it brought, you know, as I learned to work in an agile way, I changed, how do I think about how do I be the best software tester I can be? And how do I contribute to my team? And how do I work with my team? That's where my journey started. But now it's really, and there's been lots of chance to practice this this year, being agile is really thinking about what is important to me, being clear about the value and, you know, being clear about what direction am I going in? What are the outcomes that I'm after? What are the values that are most important to me as I work towards those things? And then thinking very differently about how we approach doing things rather than trying to, and I used, I used to be very guilty of this. I was very much, we must have a plan. We are going to try and think through all the things and figure out all the risks. And, you know, I, I, I was that person once upon a time. And what my agile learnings and agile experiences have helped me to do is to completely change how I approach a problem in, in terms of thinking about, okay, what's really important about this and what's the outcome we're after, what is the first thing that I can do to test the assumptions I have about my ability to get this thing done, about whether the thing I'm trying to get done is in fact the right thing. Yeah. And, and that's what agile thinking has done for me personally. It, it, it's enabled me to let go. It's also enabled me to let go of a lot of the need to control things, right? Is because when you work in an agile way, you become much more, um, much more conscious of what do you know, what is controlled, what is deterministic versus what are the things that we have ideas about, but we don't have certainty, we don't have confidence, we don't, we don't know that we know the right way to do things or whether it's the right thing. And, and, and that's, that's a whole new way to look at the world. And I will just say in 2020, that way of looking at the world has been more important than ever, given the unpredictable nature of the events that have gone on this year, being able to focus on what's really important and how, how do we design these experiments to figure out if going in that direction is the right direction to go in. That, that for me has been the, the real, the essence of being agile at this time. 
Thank you so much. That is indeed very powerful. And I think it's very, I believe it is inspirational and hopefully someone would be inspired by, by this, um, your word. And one thing I'd like to ask, I know we were not part of the 20 years journey ago, writing yeah. the manifesto. What would you like to see 20 years? Out, I mean, we're celebrating 20 years, another 20 years of the evolution of learning of the agile mindset what would you like to see wow uh so 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 that's a big question because you know it has been a fascinating ride for the past 20 years uh you know next next february will mark the occasion where yeah the people who authored the manifesto got together and created that document has inspired us all uh, but as I said before, that was the res that was the culmination of a, of a whole number of conversations and experiments and different schools of thought coming together to, to distill some really uh, important ideas down to something that is tight and concise and meaningful and helped, you know, helped guide a lot of us over the past 20 years. What I would really like to see and I don't know if I can think 20 years forward, but I would really like to see, as I said, us really focusing on, on, on the, what have we uncovered? What have we uncovered in the past 20 years about how to work well together, about, about how to build software effectively? And, uh, you know, it, it does have its roots in software. What are, the, what are the challenges that we're still facing and what have we learned about trying to apply these sets of principles and practices to, to getting software work done, to getting other kinds of work done? Um, and, and how is that gonna shape what we're gonna do differently in the next little while? I think your point though about agile expanding beyond software development is also really important because while I do not think as a community, as an industry, that we have nailed that yet, right? There's still a lot, there's still a lot of people who are really struggling to put those ideas about how do we apply these principles and practices to delivering software better. And software is an integral part of all of our lives. Almost regardless, most industries, software touches what you do one way or another. Yes. But I think we've had an increasing realization that if we want to set up software teams to work very differently and to be able to work in an agile way, all those other things around them in the organization that enable to do them to do that might have to change as well. And so the conversation has gotten a lot broader. And that's one of the things that I'm really excited about over the next, in the future, is how do we take these ideas and, and figure out how do we apply them in different fields? How do, first of all, even in the companies, you know, I work in a lot of big enterprise, in my practice as a coach before I was managing director, I work in a lot of big companies. So the problem that I'm focusing on, have been focused on is how, you know, we, we have software and IT organizations who want to do this. How, how do we help the rest of the company become more adaptive, become more focused on uh, delivering things in smaller chunks rather than creating these big, huge plans that are, you know, single points of failure? How, how, how do we focus on delivering little bits of work? And how do we focus on relating to each other as people? Being able to do more of that through the organizations not just the software delivery teams, but also applying these ideas. It is, it's very interesting to see how these ideas are, are landing in spaces that are completely decoupled from software as well. You know, when, when I took my scrum training a gazillion years ago, it's interesting. I think I have a bit of a different perspective on this because when I did my scrum training, I was, I was very much in the software development space. I was working for a telecommunications company. Half the people in my scrum class were working in software development. The other half of the people in the scrum class were in a field that was completely disconnected from software at all. And this was back in 2007, but there was, it's because there was a realization that these principles and these practices and these ideas are applicable to many kinds of work. So I think, you know, and along the past 20 years, I have met people who have been applying these principles to all sorts of different industries and diff you know, different kinds of business. But I remember uh, meeting somebody who is using agile principles and practices with her preschool students. 
somebody who came to an agile coach camp I attended because she's like, I'm using these ideas with my preschoolers. I don't know if I'll have anything in common with, uh, you know, with, with the people at this conference, somebody, somebody in the Kanban community had convinced her to come. And it was incredible because we were like, this is so fantastic seeing these ideas applied in this context. And by the way, what can we learn from you that are applicable in the context that we're working in? And it's that broadening that conversation that way, you know, after 20 years of trying to work in an agile way, and it's been more than 20 years, but after 20 years, we have a good idea of what are the problems we're still trying to encounter. I would are try, still trying to solve. What are the problems we've been encountering as we try to change that we're still trying to solve? I would love to see increased efforts at talking with other disciplines, other organizations who are solving some of those problems that we have in common and figuring out how do we learn from each other? How do we learn from each other about organizational design? How do we learn from each other about really how do we develop strong teams? Are there other things with technical practices where there are other communities we need to be interacting with? And I suspect there's a lot of those about figuring out what's the best way to th get this kind of work done today. And are we sharing our what we're learning with each other? I would, you know, so so over the next 20 years, that's one of the things that I would like to see is that it's not. Agile isn't this niche thing. It's becoming, here's a set of ideas. Here's a set of principles and practices that have a pretty broad application. And, and, and so we're broadening those applications and we're also learning from people in related fields and related domains and making sure that we're bringing those ideas into what we do rather than thinking that it's kind of a static thing and this is how we do this. It's it's about the learning. It's really about the constant, constant learning. Learning. A continuous improvement. Continuous I would say that. I, I would say indeed. Agile is far from being static because it gives you room to fail. It gives you room to actually learn from your failure. I can speak to that because I'm a startup and I've seen a lot of failures in the path of my journey and I've matured as a result of those failures and not replicating those failures. So Agile is far from being static. You are my, you are one of my heroes, Agile hero and Heron Randall as well. I'd like to hear who are your Agile heroes? Wow. <laughs> Could be one or two, as many as you can mention. Oh, as many as I can mention, well, so, so, so the person, there's so many people who have influenced me along the way. So many people I have learned from, um, the person who always is top of that list for me though, is Linda rising. Linda is an amazing woman because she has this talent for taking difficult, controversial, even ideas and sharing them with us in such a way that we understand, oh, I, I, I understand, you know, I understand why this is important. I understand how I can take this learning and apply it to my work and make a real difference about how I work with other people to get important things done. And, and she does this with such grace and such a, you know, a lovely, uh, a lovely approach and a lovely sense of humor. She's the only person I know who can, who can, in an agile, some of the things she talks about are really controversial, real hot button issues. And she does it in such a way that people who are on all sides of that issue can sit down and go, oh, oh yeah, hey, this, this is really interesting stuff. We should talk about that. And that takes an amazing skill. Um, you know, and I think she is, I was going to say, I think she has been an, uh, a role model for a lot of women in our industry. Having said that, almost every man in the industry I know also goes, I want to be Linda when I grow up. Um, <laughs> but there, there have been so many people. Um, it's, it's hard to name them. I've been very, in, you know, there's some of the other people are patrons of Agile 20. I've been very influenced by the work that Lisa Atkins has done along the way in helping really bring a, a coaching stance to the Agile world, helping really focus on the people development. How do we help people be effective? How do we help people self-organize effectively and figure out how to become better themselves because we you know i think we overlook the difficulty in that 
we, you know, we, we, we set up and we say, hey, go forth and be a self-organizing team, work well together. And it takes a lot of skills. It takes a lot of practice for people to, to be in a space where they can effectively self-organize and self-manage. Uh, you know, and I think a lot of work, a lot of the work that Lisa and the Agile Coaching Institute and all of the things that have sprung out from that have, uh, have done. Actually, the other person who I've got to mention um, is Deborah Preuss. Because Deb, uh, how I really sort of started my personal agile journey, I back when I was that software tester person, that's where I first met Deb. And think when her, uh, her organization came in to do some agile training with us. And it was thanks to that connection that I ended up at the very first agile coach camp. And for me, that was a life-changing experience. That is, that is why I am here today through ideas I encountered there through the people that I met there. And Deb, through her career, even though she's kind of moved out of the agile space these days, she has initiated so many amazing things like Agile Coach Camp and Play for Agile uh, that have just rippled out, rippled out and really become powerful forces for uh, getting people together to explore agile ideas, to share those learnings, to find new ways of working. And I owe a huge debt of gratitude to Deb. Wow. I love that there are three women um, because it's not a common thing that women celebrate women. I love that you mentioned three powerful women. And I think it's a testament that this is what agile is capable of doing about shifting the mindset, shifting the narrative, and just showing that there is greatness in everyone. Add value, you will be recognized. And I do celebrate, you said, Lin, uh, Linda Rising, Lisa Atkins, and Deborah Forrest, correct? Yeah. Uh, they are your three agile heroes. Anyway, let's now talk fun. In the spirit of festivity, I'd like, <laughs> I'd like to do something fun. Um, uh, what can I get you to do now? I'm not so sure. I like to just <laughs> infuse fun in the interview because I just feel it's very powerful. And uh, so that people can say, oh, really? After all the serious conversation, it's a real chill. So let us know something that ordinarily you wouldn't share. That is fun about you. Oh, wow. So now I'm actually sorry that I am not wearing my dinosaur necklace anymore. Oh, I wish you would wear. Here, here, you know what? <laughs> here it is. When I got dressed today, I can hold it up at least. When I got dressed today, I put on my oh. Tyrannosaurus Rex necklace <laughs> because uh, I was I was trying to sort of. It's it's a game I have with a friend who's an agile coach in Europe. Get a click card. We we try to dress so that we're matching on Fridays. It's something that we've done a little bit through the pandemic because it's been fun. And Aww. so I have my dinosaur necklace on this morning, and uh, I I love dinosaurs. Dinosaur dinosaurs are cool. Dinosaurs paleontology thinking that there were these huge, magnificent, powerful creatures that roamed the earth, like. What's not to love about dinosaurs? No, right? <laughs> <laughs> and there's still so much to learn about dinosaurs, right? Our study of paleontology is, wow. is really only a couple of hundred years old. And every year there are new discoveries and we learn new facts and some of the assumptions we have about what the dinosaurs were like and how they lived and what they were capable of changes all the time. So, but if you want something fun about me, as I said, I love dinosaurs and I just, I took this, honestly, I took this necklace off because I thought it might be kind of distracting during the No, interview. but you look very good with it. Please put it on. At least that shows that there's something fun about us because all oh, work and work and work and we need to just uh, lighten the mood and people just know we are human. We are relatable. Even at the peak of yeah. our careers, you can have fun uh, while learning. This has been an incredible interview for me. I think we've covered everything I wanted us to cover. We've covered your Agile Hero. We've talked about the manifesto. So uh, no, I have to ask this question. And I, yeah. I'd like to know, why did you accept to be our patron? I think it's an important question. And um, but first, I just want to say thanks to Agile Alliance for mm -hmm. accepting the Agile 20 Reflect Festival and um, being one of our 
top uh, partners, I think, uh, mm -hmm. for saying that uh, we'll be working with you on the Agile, the 20 years of Agile Manifesto celebration in conjunction with Agile Alliance. And the fact that you are one of our patrons, I think that is so huge and um, highly commendable. So why are you our patron? Let the people know. <laughs> so, so I wanted, I, I really wanted to be able to put my full support behind this festival. Um, as, you know, as, as a board member of Agile Alliance, now as the managing director of Agile Alliance, um, one of our organizational missions is how do we support the growth of the Agile community? How do we bring people together? How do we create spaces for people all over the world to come together and help support each other as we try to you know, advance our practice of Agile? And so when the festival came together, I was like, of course we wanna support this. It's a grassroots self-organized a set of events. We're going to bring in people from all around the planet, you know, and we're going to encourage people to do a variety of different things. That That is so, so very much in line with our organization's mission that absolutely Agile Alliance had to step up and say, yes, we want to support this in whatever way we can. Um, and so personally, when I got asked to be a patron, I was like, of course, of course. This to me is what at the heart of, this to me is really at the heart of being part of the agile community you know we have all kinds of events that we at different parts of the community pull together in order to bring us together different sorts of events with different purposes but for me personally it really the events that i love to attend the things that resonate with me are where people come together out of their passion for being agile, oh. where people are coming together, not because there is a commercial interest at stake. And I, believe me, I'm not against making money. I like making money just like everybody else. But, but it's when people are coming together from, from a different place. It's like, this excites me. This matters to me. I am really keen to contribute to pushing this conversation forward. And that to me is what Agile 20 Reflect is all about. And so to have the opportunity to be a patron, and by the way, I just want to slide this in because we're working on it. Agile Alliance will be adding an event to the Agile 20 Reflect Festival. Yes! We are, we're, we're, we're still, it's been, it's been a challenging year. Um, you know, we, we, I would have liked to have had this sooner, but we are going to do something in the middle of it. We're, we're going to do a, we're going to do a Mardi Gras party. It's not just going to be a party. There's going to be some serious elements to it. We want to do some reflection. We want to do some future specting, but, uh, but do stay tuned because we, we want to, we want to hold a gathering as well to give people a chance to come together, to exactly. celebrate, to reflect together and learn from each other a little bit and to think about this question of where are we going? Mm -hmm. And it's going to be the middle of February, Mardi Gras, Whoa. Carnival, like that yeah. opportunity just. <laughs> that would be amazing. Together. I volunteer support and whatever capacity that they need um, volunteers, I volunteer myself to be part of oh. that. Fantastic. Uh, I'm, hope, I'm hoping it's, it's, it's an event that is celebrated in different ways around the world. So exactly. I'm really hoping the world is going to come. Yeah, we will come. We will turn it up. And on a final note, I always ask this question of all my interviewers. Can you give me five words to describe the Agile 20 Reflect Festival? Five words. As you can probably tell by this interview, limiting myself to five words is going to be a challenge. But let me see what I can do here. Uh, Self-organizing. Yes. Forward focused. And I'm cheating because I'm hyphenating words. <laughs> Forward Fun, focused. Okay. Community. Mm -hmm. And togetherness. Togetherness. Whoa. And these are powerful self-organizing, forward and focus, uh, fun, community, and togetherness. Amazing. Thank you so much, ma'am, for this interview. For me, I will hold this. This is my manifesto <laughs> that I spoke with you. I wasn't part of 20 years, but I am part of today. 
And I spoke with the interim MD of Agile Alliance. I mean, who could have made that possible if not for the festival? I mean, I would have had to wait and wait years and years for me to get through to you. But I know it's not that difficult because if I met you at a conference, it's different. I didn't have to pay for no conference. I mean, thanks to the power of community, thanks to this innovative ideas of bringing people from across the globe. I'm sitting in Nigeria and I'm interviewing an MD. This is indeed a life experience for me that I will hold dearly. And I thank Scott Swivert for this um, brilliant idea. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being part of this interview. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you. And, and likewise, I am thrilled that we, we are able to connect. And I am looking forward to time where I'm going to be able to come to Nigeria yes. and, and connect <laughs> with you and, and with the rest of the Agile community there in person. You know, one of the silver linings of 2020 has been that suddenly everything being virtual has broken down some of the barriers to connection, yes. which, which is great. That's what's making Agile 20 Reflect possible. 